Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is the Suron Ultra B. This is a fully electric dirt bike that I love so much that I just bought it. So if you're interested in this bike, make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna to try to do a complete overview in this video. But remember, I can come back to this bike again and again, and I wanna know what you wanna know about it so I can answer your questions. So do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit like. I also wanna thank McLean Sports because they have been awesome. As you guys know, if you follow this channel for a while, I review motorcycles for a living, which makes it pretty rare that I bought a bike. And of course, I bought a Z900 RS, so I'm not all about the electrics. I still have a gasoline one as well and if you want to tell me hey this bike isn't for you because it's electric no problem save yourself the comments you can tune into another video but I think this style of bike and this bike in particular is the perfect electric sort of transition and electric might be better for some people's use so what I'm going to do is I have a background in EVs I've been used to be considered an expert in electric vehicle cars for major manufacturers it is what it is I'm going to approach this not from the sort of mountain bikey style that the Suron Light BX is. I'm gonna approach this from a motorcycle perspective and an EV perspective. And I think I'm gonna be able to give you some information that maybe some of the other videos aren't covering. And of course I can't cover everything. So if you wanna know more, you're just gonna let me know uh, moving on. But I wanna again, thank McLean Sports here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Not only did they sell this to me, they also um, allow me to film their bikes anytime. So if you have a question about this bike or anything else in the Suron lineup, even though I didn't buy everything else uh, I can certainly review and compare and contrast and do everything else in their lineup just let me know what you want and of course if you're in Fredericton or anywhere in New Brunswick these guys are the ones to see to buy something like this let's get going with this review so before I get going on what this is let me explain why I bought it and you'll be able to see if you're sort of like me or not like me now either way I think I'll be able to give you some information on this bike but you can see my biases going in and I want to sort of uh, preface that so first of all I have a four-cylinder street bike uh, makes all kinds of power super fun and I've ridden on road bikes basically all of my life since I was 16 years old so this is my first dirt bike and it's not that I haven't ridden dirt bikes before but I've never bought one in the past and part of that is for a variety of reasons. I've always loved adventure bikes. The idea of being able to travel across the country and then head down any dirt road and that kind of thing and that's always really intrigued me but I know that my riding skill off-road is not 600 pound adventure bike skill right I don't have that kind of skill so I've always thought about getting a dirt bike for where I live there's all kinds of trails everywhere and that's what this is going to be for me it's an off-road trail bike it's not an on-road bike in any way and I've always wanted to get like maybe a KLX uh, Kawasaki KLX 300 or something like that and I never quite pulled the trigger so we're going to talk about why I think this is perfect for me compared to a small dirt bike in in electric I think the electric is part of what makes it great so the first thing we'll do is we'll talk about the weight this thing is almost a hundred pounds lighter than something like the KLX 300 so to me that really appeals it makes it much more easy to maneuver now if you watch videos of this bike a lot of people are comparing that to Suron's smaller model which is almost like a super fast e-bike it's about a hundred ish pounds just over a hundred pounds this one's about 187 pounds so 187 pounds is nothing for a motorcycle but it's a lot if you're used to the previous Suron uh, or the Suron Light B or yeah Light BX because that bike is so light and much more mountain bike like so I love that this is lightweight for a motorcycle there's a couple things I like about it as an e-bike couple things I like about it as an overall bike and a couple things I don't like about it which I'll talk about in this video let's start talking about some of these features by coming in a little closer all right so when I review motorcycles I always start at the front wheel and I talk about you know this is where you can tell what the manufacturer's intent was is you know any motorcycle you look at you look at the front wheel and obviously this is an off-road bike sometimes off-road bikes have on off-road tires these are not on off-road tires they're off-road tires sort of an all-terrain type uh, tread here for what I'm going to be doing this is going to be perfect now the downside for this as a motorcycle is most motorcycles in this price range in the lightweight range still offer a 21 inch diameter wheel this is a 19 inch diameter wheel I don't think that's going to be an issue for me but one of the really cool things about Suron is you can upgrade like crazy these things are known for their upgrades it's like having a Jeep Wrangler you never see a Jeep Wrangler stock you very rarely see a Suron stock and I am going to keep this stock for a while so we're going to leave that as is but I'm going to see how these go but again 19 inches for what I'm going to do is fine one thing I like compared to the Light BX this is much more motorcycle style uh, suspension here and one thing that you don't see is this is an upside down fork now that's 
generally done less so on uh, off-road bikes, certainly less so in this price class of off-road bikes uh, when you talk about motorcycles. And what it does is adds extra stiffness up top and ex less unsprung weight down low. And that, again, helps with the handling, helps with keeping contact with the ground. And again, it's just a little bit more advanced than you would typically, typically get in a gasoline dirt bike at this price. One thing I like is you do have proper motorcycle style disc brakes up front here. It's a single disc on the far side, spoked wheels, all the kind of stuff you'd see on a regular dirt bike. Uh, the Light BX again has a little bit more um, e-bike, mountain bike style brakes. So you've got a big upgrade in brakes here and that's good because you've got a big upgrade in power here over that Light BX. Compared to uh, a gas vehicle, we'll talk about how the power works, but let's just keep moving through the bike as we go on. So this is where electric bikes get kind of weird and different compared to gas bikes. What you normally have here in the gas bikes is the engine sort of up here and everything down there. What you have here is there's your electric motor and that's it. Like that's the powertrain on this entire bike. What you have in behind this cool looking frame is the battery and that battery is removable. You can charge it both on the bike and off the bike. We're gonna talk about charging in a second as we move on. But all of the weight here is relatively down low because there's no gas tank up high. You've got, again, only 187 pounds of weight. You've got your battery, which is a lot of your weight uh, centralized in the frame, of course. And then, of course, your motor down low. And that's it. Now, while we're looking at that view here, you can see the foot peg down here. This is a nice, typical dirt uh, bike foot peg. It is pretty large. It's got good teeth on it. Uh, you'll notice there's no foot brake. This is one thing that's going to be very hard for me to adjust to, and I wish Suron would do it. For those of us who are used to motorcycles, there's no foot brake. It's all hand brakes because there's no gears your feet can stay put. So I like that from a riding perspective, from letting other people try this out who don't have as much motorcycle experience. What I don't like is every time I go to brake, I go to look for a brake down there and it's not there. It'd be cool if you could add like a foot brake as an option. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, you guys will tell me in the aftermarket if that kind of thing's available. It's not the end of the world, but going from my street bike to this bike, it's just that muscle memory I always seem to, seem to reach for a uh, foot brake. Coming back here, you can see the uh, advanced suspension on this. We're gonna talk about the advanced suspension as well. And this is what I really like, both front and rear, you have adjustable suspension, which you don't typically get at a dirt bike at this price range. So let's talk about some of that right now. So my personal tastes in a motorcycle involve really good suspension. And the motorcycle that I bought, the gasoline motorcycle I bought, has an upgraded suspension over the lower trim levels and it's fully adjustable front and rear. And I really like that because you can kind of customize it for how you want. You don't typically get that on a lower level dirt bike. And again, I'm gonna to continue to refer to the KLX 300 because that was the dirt bike I was considering before actually pulling the trigger on this instead. Uh, and it doesn't have to be that one, but anything in that class, Honda makes some, Yamaha makes some, uh, uh, there's several, and I really like Kawasaki bikes. I own a Kawasaki bike, so it's nothing against Kawasaki. Um, but I think that dirt bikes make sense in this area. And the problem with those dirt bikes is they're a little bit lower end and they don't have the same type of suspension that you can get on something like this. So this does cost a little bit more than a KLX 300. And some people are gonna say, hey, that's not worth it. And that's fine. If it's not worth it for you, I get that. But let's just take a look at what you have here. First of all, you've got your, um, you know, your sort of shock tucked in and forward so this weight is centralized. It's a piggyback shock, which means as the shock really does a lot of compression, that kind of thing, the heat of that comes over to here. This allows you to have really consistent performance, which is kind of nice. And then you have full compression uh, adjustment right there. So let's just zoom up to that a little bit. You also have uh, preload adjustment, but there's your compression adjustment up top there, that little knob on the top of the piggyback right up there. And then you have full rebound adjustment as well down on the bottom, sort of in the center of your screen right there with a screwdriver looking thing. So you've got rebound and compression adjustment and you've got uh, preload adjustment, which means you essentially have a fully adjustable suspension on a lightweight, uh, you know, more or less entry level dirt bike, which to me is really awesome. Now let's look at the front suspension and then I'll talk about why I think this is important to me and why it might matter to you as well. So taking a look at the top of the fork tube here, both fork tubes are identical and they both have rebound adjustment on the top. Compression adjustment is on the bottom. And again, what that means is these upside down forks, again, a bit of a step up from the typical bikes in this class, are fully adjustable, front and rear. So let me talk about why that matters. So if you think about the typical gas dirt bike in this rough price range, and again, I'm still thinking that KLX 300, that kind of thing. What is the first thing they talk about when they compare the Kawasaki to the Honda to everything else? They talk about the suspension and the issues they have with it are that, you know, whenever one's too soft or one's firm or one does this or one does that, the problem is none of them are adjustable. So your solution then is to buy new parts, which brings you up to the price of this thing 
anyways, right? So one of the things I really like about this is this allows you to adjust the suspension to your type of riding. For me, that's gonna be general light trail riding. I like to go exploring. It's not about going off huge jumps or anything else, but there's plenty of videos of this thing going off jumps and you can do all that because you've got the adjustable suspension. So you can make this bike do anything you want. And the bigger thing is, I say I'm not gonna go off jumps and do all that kind of stuff, but as my skills progress, as I get more used to things, there's gonna be times where a little bit uh, adjustment in the suspension is going to adapt to my riding style as well as my terrain. And because it's so easily adjustable, you can adapt it on the go. Hey, I just wanna stiffen this up. Hey, I just wanna tighten that up a little bit. Change the rebound, change the compression. You can do that as you're riding. So when you hit different types of trails, you can uh, swap it on the go. And one of the key things in this class of bike when we're talking about gas bikes is it's more entry level suspension and that means you either like it or you don't. Honda is known to be a little soft. Kawasaki is known to be a little bit firmer, that kind of thing. So you've got those things where you can now just set it up the way you want. While we have this view, let's take a look at as I straddle this bike. So the other thing I like about this bike is it's not that big or wide. You can see I'm flat footing. And now I'm six feet tall, so I'm not super short. Um, some bikes in this class, gas bikes, I can flat foot, some I can't. Uh, doesn't bother me that it's a little lower than some. I actually think that's a good thing. I think it's got all the ground clearance you need. It's got all the suspension travel you need. And again, I could adjust, you can add larger wheels front and rear, and it's got a way to adjust the speedometer even to have that uh, adapted as you move through. So all of this is set up to, if you wanted to upgrade in the future to do that, but the way it fits me right now is perfect. And the seat is actually pretty comfortable for a dirt bike. So it still is narrow. And without a gas tank, you can really move forward and back anywhere you want. You can see this is a really long seat. In some markets, this is available with full lights as a dual sport bike, and you can have a seat with passenger pegs. But for me, I can really move around this bike. I really feel like I can manhandle it. And again, because it is 187 pounds, it's easy to do feet on the foot pegs again no problem here slight lean forward a lot of people can get risers here they get adjustable handlebars again all of those accessories are available to you there's lots to talk about there we'll dig into some of the uh, riding specific stuff right now all right first thing we're going to do is just take a look at the dash here key is up here and yes it does have a key just like a regular dirt bike not a lot to the dash now again it doesn't need a tachometer so that doesn't matter you're going to see some flickering that happens on camera that is just the way the camera interacts with the screen that's not actually uh, the way it works so what you have here is a bar graph for power up top and there is a little tiny percentage now my eyes without glasses on are gonna have trouble reading that. It's a little smaller than I would like, but you can see it's right now charged to 100% and that's the way it works. Now, there are some drive modes in here and you can go down to uh, Eco, you can go up to Sport and go down to D for Daily. So you can customize the way this works. And we're gonna talk about why an electric powertrain really makes a difference over gas closer to the end of this video. Uh, but drive modes matter on an electric vehicle. So um, this is a good thing to have. But there's a ton of customization. And what I love is they put it all on a keychain here. So we're gonna talk about what this is. You can go into the settings in here and uh, you know, it basically swaps out your speedometer for an A or a B, actually it's all these words here, B, E, P, A, T, C, and F. So we're gonna talk about those and there's also stuff on the back here, uh, long press for different things. Um, it's got reverse as well, we'll talk about that uh, because of course that's easy on electric motorcycle, uh, automatic slip control. So let's just talk briefly about what you see right here to talk about the adjustability of things. So. Because this is an electric vehicle, brake and energy system, right? So when you hit the brakes, there are actually five levels. Let's just zoom out here for a second. There are five levels you can adjust this to of essentially engine braking. And what that actually does is regenerate. So it charges the battery. Think about how a Prius works. Every time it coasts and goes downhill and that kind of thing, it's charging the battery and that kind of thing. So this has various levels of what would feel like engine braking to the rider. You can set up to five different levels and that is just the engine brake. So that's the, um, the E actually so in there. Now the B, when you pull the brake levers, you can also have various levels of regeneration. Front and rear um, brake lever will regenerate from the back wheel. So you can change that um, amount of regeneration or amount of just using the disc brake. It changes the feel of the way it works. And we're gonna talk about these in a future video, um, but those are the things that you can customize. If that doesn't make sense to you, as you drive an EV, it'll start making more sense and it's nice to have these things. Then there's the brake override, there's a tilt switch. So tilt switch is pretty cool. If you drop this bike beyond a 
certain angle, um, it will actually turn itself off, which for me, I would turn on as sort of an on off type switch, uh, the setting anyways. Uh, for me, I would turn it on, but if you are super aggressive in your corners going up along you know, a berm and getting almost straight sideways, you don't want obviously to cut power there. Uh, ASR settings, you can set the um, traction control system to three different settings. Throttle sensitivity, you can set that to three different settings, which again, is separate from your drive modes, which also set it to different settings. Uh, there's a diagnostic report, so if you get to the T thing, you're not gonna use that, but your dealer might. Uh, and then there's uh, long press, reverse, and double click to ASR settings. So what you can do is you can set up your traction control to be completely off, and then when you turn it on, it's one of three settings. So it's like a quick double tap or triple tap or hold down, I think of the button, I have to remember exactly how that works. But the point is, uh, you can go full traction control off, and then when you turn it on, it's the setting you want, whether full traction control, help you avoid wheelies, stuff like that, or just enough to keep help you keep in control. So there's three levels of traction control settings, but you also add a flick of a trigger switch, which we'll show you in a second, you can turn that right off, which is kind of cool. So there's all kinds of settings, and by having this on the keychain, it allows you to just check it while you're out, quickly uh, set something, and you can change the way this bike handles and behaves based on the terrain you're on. Now, the other thing you can do is change this, the uh, charge setting. Now, this, I think, is useful. Max charge, I believe, is 1,100 watts. Uh, Mid-range is 750 watts, and then the slower charge is 480 watts. What that basically means is that's the amount of speed. So think of like watts as water filling a bucket, and the bucket being your battery. So this is gonna charge it slower, this is gonna charge at medium speed, and this is gonna charge at the fastest. Now, there's a couple reasons you want do this some people believe that charging batteries too fast can uh, hurt longevity of a battery um, some of that's been debated with tesla stuff recently the tesla fast charging is showing that it's not actually degrading batteries uh, in their vehicles um, to the expect that to the amount that they would expect but long story short you can set the speed what i like this for is i happen to have a Tesla in my garage. And when it's charging, it's using most of the power to my garage. I have to get it rewired eventually, but um, what that means is I can slow down my Tesla and I can slow down this if I wanted to, um, to charge them both at the same time overnight or something like that. So it goes about 140 kilometers on a charge, which we'll talk about. Uh, let's go over the controls and then we'll start talking about some of the EV specific stuff here and why it makes sense if, in case I'm speaking Greek to you. All right, left side control is very motorcycle friendly. Of course, this is not your throttle side, so you just have a brake here, not a clutch. So that's one thing that's gonna throw me off. I don't think I'll have an issue grabbing for the clutch because it doesn't really feel like it needs to shift, um, but it is something to just keep in mind that you don't wanna be yanking that like a clutch or you're gonna be going over. I believe that is uh, front brake there. So, uh, oh, I'm not actually sure. I'll have to tell front or rear. Um, have to double check that when I get out riding that. I think it's the same as a motorcycle being that this, my right hand would be front brake. I don't know, we'll figure that out in a bit. All right, so over here, uh, typical motorcycle stuff, high beam and low beam. Yes, this is a dirt bike, but you still have a headlight and you can turn that headlight off completely or on low beam or on high beam. So if you're out in the woods and maybe hunting season, maybe you want a little extra visibility out there because again, it is a quiet bike. Uh, you can turn on that extra light there or you can just leave it off and you know, why waste battery if you don't need it? Not that it uses a ton of battery, it's an LED light. Then down below here, you have a horn, which again, really loud. You wouldn't think you need a horn on a dirt bike, but this horn is a traditional motorcycle horn. Remember, this bike is very quiet. People don't hear you coming on a dirt bike the same way. So you can get their attention uh, with the horn because you haven't got the same amount of noise. And then there's a reverse button here. Again, uh, what electric uh, bikes can do, electric motors, is they just reverse where the plus and the minus go in kind of thing, uh, the, where the power goes in. And of course you have the ability to fully reverse. So because you can, why wouldn't you? And that can be helpful in trails just to sort of back it up a little bit. Instead of having to muscle it back, you can just wheel that back uh, by holding that down and giving it some throttle. Uh, so that works pretty well. Check on the other side here, throttle side, and then I want to touch one piece. Actually, we don't touch that piece in the middle right now. This is a USB port in here as well, so you can charge a device that right by your handlebars if that's what you wanted to do as well. Let's check throttle side. So normally I film the throttle side from the throttle side, but I want to show you this switch here. So you have a kill switch right here. You have a little trigger switch, which uh, once you start the bike and do everything, you're going to have to hold that trigger to get a ready light on the dash. Once you get the ready light on the dash, you're good to go. Just an extra little fail safe outside of uh, this. So if you turn the bike on, it's not going to just go away if someone twists the throttle, because again, it, it doesn't really have a neutral, right? So you have to make sure that when it's on, you don't twist the throttle and take off It make sure you say ready and then you can go. Down here, the reason I'm filming from this side, S, E, and D, Sport, Eco, and Drive. That's where your uh, buttons are there. And then that kill switch there. Buttons feel pretty good. Um, not crazy, crazy, like super high-end motorcycle stuff, but again, they feel plenty durable for what you're gonna be using this for. So that's your controls. Now we need to talk battery, and then we need to make sense of all this and why buy an EV bike over a gas bike. 
Okay, first thing I want to show you is just how to get this out. Actually, one thing I should mention here, there's the hooks right there. Those are in for shipping. Uh, you can take them out because you don't want them to like rattle out. Uh, I'm leaving them in right now because I'm going to take this home in a trailer and I may want to um, use them to help tie down the bike. I just kind of like that they're there. I can bring them in and out um, if I am trailering the bike and that's what I'm going to do to get it home. So uh, those wouldn't be there on a normal bike, I would think. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't think you would leave them in. I'm going to take them out, uh, but you do have them there. All right, keys down here. We're going to throw the key and we're going to pop this seat off and you're going to pull it back. So the way this works is there's a little knob on the front and it clips into there and then the rest clips back. So as long as you push it sort of forward, everything works. Now, underneath the seat is some interesting stuff too, because again, this is an electric bike and they think of things really well in here. This is sort of like Tesla in their frunk. Uh, they make use of the space really, really well. So let me show you what we've got as we get a little closer. All right, so what you're looking at right now is underneath the seat. Over here is your battery and you can sort of flip this up. This panel comes up and the battery comes straight out. We're going to leave that there just for now because um, to be honest, it's nothing that exciting. If you want to see it in a future video, just let me know that that's something you would have liked to see in this video and I'll make sure I do it. Now, this is your charger. Uh, I'm not going to throw it in the bike right now either. This, is, this isn't this is just small stuff, right? This is big and it's a little bit heavy. Um, but what's cool about this is this under seat area was designed to hold exactly this charger. And I can get it in you know, a little bit later. I've never done it before, so that's why I'm not doing it now, but I've seen it in there and it sits flush. So you can keep this under the seat while you're riding if you want to. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it in my garage. But the point is, if you're, you know, if 140 kilometers isn't enough, what you can do is you can slide it in here. You can plug it into your battery in the front by flipping this up. And then there's a little lip there. So you can keep the seat in place and have it kind of come out and charge. There is a charge port on the battery down in this section here where you would normally plug it in when it's on the bike. So you could actually keep your charger on the bike, run the cord out to plug it in the wall, or actually sort of plug it into here while the charger's on the bike. For me, again, the dirt riding I'm doing 140-ish kilometers at 40 kilometers an hour is how they rate that 140 kilometers. That is going to be plenty for me. Now it goes up to like 90 kilometers an hour, uh, but the range isn't gonna be an issue for the type of riding I'm doing. But if you wanted to, anywhere there's a plug, you can carry your charger with you and it's designed to fit in there. So super smart design right there. While we're taking a look at the charger, let me just show you as well, there are handles on there, which make it super easy to carry as well. And that also helps you get it in and out uh, of various places. So again, those handles sort of fold down like this and like that, and then you can set it down any way you want. But yeah, it's nice to have extra little handles. Again, Suron's done this for a while. They really think about everything that you would need for a bike like this. All right, so we've gone through a number of long, boring, technical things, and you know, I get that that's kind of boring, but I think some of that information needs to be put out there in a video like this. So now let's talk about why I chose electric over gas and why you may or may not want to. So the first thing is, yeah, we talked about the range. Range is always an issue on an electric vehicle. And when they quote 140 kilometers, uh, they do 140 kilometers at 40 kilometers an hour. Now, again, it's a dirt bike. Depends on how you ride. For me, I'm not going to do crazy, crazy stuff. So if I go for an hour or two, that's probably all I'm going to do. If I do two hours at 60 kilometers an hour, this bike will still do it. Like it, it's capable of that. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that. A lot of the trails in my house are a little bit more technical. So you're faster and slower and that kind of thing. This is all the range that I need in a bike like this, a typical dirt bike. I'm going to go out, have some fun, come home. And again, you can charge it fairly quickly, a couple hours and uh, charge two, three hours, something like that to charge and you're back out again. But to go out for a couple hours is kind of all I'm going to do. And the way I typically take my ATV out, which is actually what I traded for this um, to, to purchase it, uh, I didn't enjoy the ATV as much. I was going slower, that kind of thing. Whereas this one, you could go a little quicker, but you could also slow down and again on the technical trails. So there is that range is an issue. If you need more range, get more range, maybe stick with gas. I'm not saying that the range is for everyone. Where this stands out to me over a gas motorcycle is think about the way electric motors make power and gas motorcycles make power. If you get a smaller lightweight bike, let's say a 230 or a 300, that kind of engine size, they have to rev to make the power, right? So even if you, um, if you're driving it, you really kind of have to rev it up to make that power, which is fine. So that's why the top speeds on something like a 300cc bike is going to be higher than this. This one's around 90, they say, um, as a top speed. But if you don't drive a dirt bike at top speed all the time, an electric powertrain makes more sense in a lightweight bike because you have instant and full torque at any speed, right? At down low in the rev range. And for me, this thing feels significantly more powerful than something like a 300cc in this slower speeds in that, you know, hill climbing, that kind of thing. 
and it's instant throttle. There's no clutch, no gear, no nothing, so you can just focus on the ride. I like that it's a little bit quieter. Some people like to hear that thing. I like to hear the motor on my gas bike too, but I kind of like that when I'm out in the woods, it's not super loud. It doesn't disturb a whole bunch of people, and I can kind of sneak around just about anywhere, and I'm not a bother to anybody. Late at night, kids sleeping in a house near the trails, no big deal, I can zip by. They don't even hear me going by. It does make some noise. We'll do that as we do riding reviews of this. So. It's the power delivery of an electric bike that makes a difference. This thing can wheelie, no problem. And keep in mind, overall power of this bike, it's like 100 pounds-ish, almost 100 pounds lighter than something like a KLX 300. So right away, you have a weight advantage in both power, in handling, and in that low-end torque, you've got more power down there. So for me, what I want on a dirt bike is an easy to ride, lightweight. If I drop it, I can pick it up and keep going. Get me out for a couple hours in the afternoon on weekends here, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. This thing fits that perfectly. The adjustable suspension means as I progress in my skills, if I want to jump and land this thing, not a problem. But if I want to soften it, if I want to you know, drive a little more slowly, I can adjust that suspension for driving slowly. If I want to drive a little faster in rougher terrain, I can adjust the suspension to adjust in faster and rougher terrain. And that means that this bike has everything that I'm looking for in a lightweight bike and no gas, no maintenance, no oil changes. I mean, I shouldn't say no maintenance, still having some maintenance, but no oil changes, no valve adjustments, all that kind of stuff. And because I've been working with EVs for quite a while, I have a pretty good confidence level in the durability of both this brand and the technology overall. I'm not saying that you have to be there yet, but I will say this is something to consider for a lightweight, lightweight fun, durable bike. A couple other little details I just want to cover before I wrap up this video. So the video is kind of done now, but I do want to show you a couple things that I just think are cool. So uh, let's talk about them right now. All right, this isn't normally part of my review. It's just me as an owner. One of the things I think is really cool is the frame here is this cool shape and it's narrow and it's lightweight, but it's also, and it's hard to see on the video, a slight green color. It just adds a visual interest and anything that's kind of visually interesting to me is pretty cool. Uh, some of the things you don't see on bikes uh, all the time or on vehicles that you see up close. So again, you've got a uh, dark, gray down there contrasted with the uh, dark green there and it's got a bit of a metallic, metallic color too. It's super cool. The other thing I want to show you is just the headlight. Another silly thing here is a dirt bike with a headlight. I kind of like it. So first of all, if you just turn the bike on, you have the little daytime running lights on the outside here. I happen to have the headlight off. You can hit the headlight on. There's your low beam and there's your high beam. And what I like about this is because it's a silent bike, it just creates a little bit more visibility out in the distance. People don't hear you out in the distance, but you can just create a little bit extra visibility there. So if you're ever concerned, like I said, it's hunting season here. Uh, you want a little bit extra visibility. You can get that visibility from the light. And again, you can turn it off. Again, these obviously aren't super bright daytime running lights, but they just give you a bit of a perspective there. And again, you're not driving an alternator or anything. You're just running it off the battery, super simple stuff. It's just one of those cool little details that works. The final thing I want to mention that's really cool about this bike that you really don't get with other dirt bikes is there is tremendous aftermarket support for this bike. So you want to switch out wheel sizes, wheel types, you know, suspension adjustments, like Beyond what I could even comprehend, there are so many customizations for this thing both with an aftermarket support. And what that means is that you can buy it stock like me, and I have really no need to change this from stock, but if you do wanna you know, swap it up, change it up, there are so many things you can do with this all over the internet, um, some of which you can get here at the dealer, some of which you can hop online and grab stuff as well. So I think that's one of the things that makes it super cool. It's this lightweight, super maneuverable, fun, very peppy, very powerful bike that also allows you to kind of make it your own. Now again, I plan to keep this stock, which is almost nobody does that, but the ability to swap out wheels, to make bigger tires and that kind of thing, the, the fact that Suron built it with that in mind to be able to handle all these types of accessories, I think is super, super cool. So that is my first review of this bike that I bought. Let me know in the comments what you want to know about it because again, I'm going to be filming this again. We're going to do riding reviews. I'm going to show you sort of, uh, you know, we're going to explore through the woods, maybe get some fall color videos as well. Um, yeah, I think this is super cool. I think it makes a ton of sense for some, pe for a lot of people. There's absolutely people that aren't ready for this, don't want it, no problem. I'm not gonna tell you that you have to buy this. There's all kinds of gas bikes inside here and all sorts of other stuff on the channel that you'll see. But we're gonna talk a little bit more about this bike because I really like it. Thanks everybody for watching. And again, I wanna thank McLean Sports here at Frederick, New Brunswick. If you are looking for one of these, just swing by. They've got good, knowledgeable people on them. Uh, they 
they've got all sorts of uh, units that they've been driving around. They're loving them as well. And to me, that's the thing with a small old dirt bike. It's not about, you know, being the ultimate motorcycle. It's just about something you can grab and have a ton of fun on. That's what this is. These guys know that and they'll help you out. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll talk to you in the next one.